Unfortunately, prices like this are a thing in the past. That's why we're going to see John Howe. He's an engineer who's been working on energy for quite a while now. He's built himself a solar tractor, a solar car, and a solar woods rig where he can cut and split his wood and not use a drop of fossil fuel. Yeah, I'm John Howe, retired mechanical engineer, living my final days up in this lovely place in Waterford with a farm here, over 100 acres, about 35 acres open. We're sitting out in the porch in my wife's studio and enjoying every day. This is a 50-year-old uh, Farmo Cub converted to complete solar-powered electric drive. And I did this to, uh, to see if uh, this concept works in the light of uh, the imminent decline of fossil energy. And sooner or later, we'll have no fossil fuel. And I'm uh, just wondering if it's possible that we could have a modern civilization uh, without any fossil energy. And uh, this tractor is a concept, it's not a prototype, because a prototype would be a vehicle that you hope to go into production with pretty much the same as a prototype. This is a concept vehicle to, as a data point to show that this uh, method of taking direct sunlight and to power the vehicle works and can do all the normal farm functions. This tractor was built 50 years ago to replace a team of horses. It was a 10 horsepower tractor just big enough to uh, pull a 12 inch plow. That task of moving this uh, load of wood up from the wood pile is, is Mickey Mouse. I mean, it's peanuts for this, for this rig. A lot of suburbia is built on good old farmland. And I think what's gonna happen is that suburbia is gonna have to relocalize into community centers and uh, grow their own food. And a vehicle like this would be ideal because one one little vehicle like this could easily do the gardening for 10 or 15 or 20 households in a suburban setting. I mean, all you need is a half an acre, a quarter acre to really supplement your food system. And uh, all those, a lot of that suburbia is built on good old farmland, which could be bought back. So uh, it could be ideal for that situation. It was ready uh, 2004 to take to the Common Ground Fair. Uh, on the way to the Common Ground Fair, I stopped at the Farmington Fair and put it into a pulling, tractor pulling contest. And it was, it was amazing. I wasn't quite sure what gear to use or how it would work, but uh, we had, they had a progressive load where the load gets more and more and the, the front end of the electric tractor came up and it just kept right on going, and going and going and going and going and did very, very well. And when I drove out of the ring, everybody stood up and clapped. <laughs> they were so excited. To, all these great big John Deere tractors and this little farm old cub with, with the panels on it. Transportation is the big problem. So in order to investigate that, I started by building, starting with a vehicle which is already built, ready to go. It's a 48-volt club car. And uh, believe it or not, they, they trade these things in about every six or eight years because the battery pack gets run down. And the, the, the um, golf um, park will, um, will just trade a whole fleet in. But the nice thing about this vehicle with a 48 volt system, I was able to get a 2500 watt 48 volt inverter, which is a standard heavy duty inverter. 2500 watt inverter is a lot of power. That'll run your whole house just idling. Uh, you know, the fridge and the lights and the fuel pumps and so forth and so on. So um, the beauty of this system is now I can take a, uh, I have a 100, 150 foot extension cord here, 12 gauge extension cord. I can go way out in the woods with an electric chainsaw. I'm gonna need to plug it in. You know why this is unplugged is because we lost power two nights ago when, and I just ran this right in the house. Second time I've done it, run, it right, run my cord right in the house and uh, and uh, run everything in the house in it. There you go. Yeah. You can get some idea. Right now, we're charging. This vehicle's charging at almost seven amps. With the inverter running and the chainsaw,
that's taken about a half horsepower just to run it. That's taking about the same amount of horse of, of power that's coming in just to run the inverter and and, and idle the, the chainsaw. Of course, when I get sawing, I'll take more than that, so I'll start to draw reserve from the batteries. This is just a Remington ninety-dollar electric chainsaw that you can buy at, at uh, Home Depot. <laughs> Same solar panels that you have on the tractor, the same type? Yes. But the tractor has four, this has two. The tractor is a, a 96 volt system. And actually, it's 108. I got an extra, stuck on an extra battery. And this is a 48 volt system. The standard 175 watt, uh, two and a half foot by five foot panels. If you had the right voltage inverter, you could plug the house into the tractor. But they don't make 108 volt or 96 volt inverters. But a 48 volt inverter taking DC, 48 volt DC to 120 volt AC is a standard off the shelf item. So the two panels are about $1,500, $750 a piece. The batteries, the batteries about, batteries right now, these super batteries cost about 200 bucks a piece. And there's four of them there. That's $800 for the batteries, $1,500 for the panels, $1,200 for a used golf cart. 2,500 watts for an inverter, you do the math. <laughs> it's uh, five, six thousand bucks. And this is the this is the current coming in. There's six amps coming in right now. Six amperes, 52 volts. That's 300 watts. That's almost half a horsepower. Now this one is at zero. This is the current going out. This is the load, which will go up when we uh, when we go someplace. Or if I turn on the inverter, that's what's going to make the, uh, the alternating current to run the chainsaw. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's right up to 7 amps, way, way up. That's 350 watts. 7 times 50 is 350 watts. Now, if you're in the woods, you can't park in the shade, you won't have any power coming in. So you want to try to park it in a sunny place. Being a golf cart with big fat tires, it doesn't mind going in the off-terrain, off-road terrain. What's nice is it's quiet. You don't have any fumes or noise or... It really is quite pleasant. How's that cord look, Ivor? Ah, we'll just cut down a yellow birch here. by hand, I think you'd rather have a solar panel. <laughs> but you see, when you're sawing, you're sawing such a short period of time that uh, the watt hours is very low for uh, cutting firewood. Meanwhile, it's coming in two or three. Meanwhile, it's coming in all the time. And that's in the shade, you're getting two or three. Yeah. Here, Arbor, you want to drive it back up? Okay. Go across the oh, it's great. Completely silent. It's amazing. Oh, she goes right up the hill. Well, I use it for a data point to see how, how it worked. And, uh, and it worked so well, I decided to do the MG. <laughs> So I said, okay, we gotta get a vehicle that I can register and insure and put on the road, get an inspection on it, and um, so I can get some miles on it and really see how this works. Because transportation is the fundamental user of fossil energy. I wanna get the power directly from the sun, just like the, the tractor or the golf cart. So this will have panels on the top. This will have three panels on the top. It'll carry its panels with us. It'll look kind of bizarre when it goes down the road, but it will work and will draw attention again to the solutions and the problems of the imminent decline of fossil energy.
It sure beats walking, it sure beats riding a bike. Right. And when that sun's out in the summer, all I, I can go for rides, I can go 50 or 100 miles depending on the battery pack. And it's a lot of fun, it's quiet, it's clean, it gets infinity miles per gallon, it's zero pollution. Thank you. We could, you could hop in, we could go for a ride. This is, my, this is my power meter here. I try to keep it under the red and cruise in the green. Now this is all registered, legal, everything. This is a 126 volt system. Okay. Everything's turned off. We're just coasting. Now we're moving and using nothing. You, you want to come down? You want to come down the mountain like zero. this? I tried to identify a goal out there, a totally fossil fuel-free modern society, and I and I pointed this how how it could be done in the book. And I am a firm believer that the best way to go is with using direct solar incoming energy, specifically photovoltaic energy. Panels are amazing things. That's why I suggest everybody get a couple or one or two. Start playing with them because they're they're like transistor radios. You turn them on, they work. They work forever. They work for years and years. They don't wear out. Uh, and to watch that meter go up when the sun's out is really exciting. <laughs>